Hey folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to Let's Try Transport Fever 2. Transport Fever is a game about, oops, <laughs> the car arrived at its location and disappeared. I guess the thing, same thing, thing will probably happen here. It's like, I want to open up with something cinematic. There we go. Check it out. Ooh, commercial town. Everyone's got to eat some burgers over here. Um, Transport Fever 2 is a game about transportation. You are a transportation sort of tycoon or mogul or whatever. Maybe I should pause the game here. Um, and your goal is to make as much money as possible while providing transportation that people would like to have. Um, they, they can start the game as early as 1850, I think, or as late as 2000. I decided to start in 1920 for the purpose of this. If you start in 1850, your vehicles are going to be like horse-drawn wagons because, of course, cars weren't really invented uh, at that point. Uh, certainly, we're not uh, anywhere close to being mass-produced. And even now, in the 20s, we got some pretty uh, pretty cool vehicles. So the game does evolve over time. Um, and now, interesting thing. Let's say you want to play in one era and one era only. You can actually freeze the date progression. In the bottom right corner, you've got this, like, you know, play, fast forward, faster forward button over here. This affects sort of the tick of the game in, you know, in, in gameplay, right? Um, I.e., Vehicles move around, you make money, you pay for upkeep and whatever. But there's also a date here. And this date, this affects what technologies and things can pop up. You can click on this and change it, including freezing it. So now we are forever going to be March 30th, 1920. The game itself plays. People move around, you will have expenses, you will make income, yada, yada, yada. But you will be forever stuck in 1920 here with the 1920 technology, which I think is really cool. That, that's a nice little touch. I really like that, and I wouldn't have realized that existed, uh, except that I watched some developer uh, videos before starting to record this, and I thought, well, that's quite spiffy. So, um, you are not gonna, as far as I know, you don't own any industry or anything in this game. You are purely here to provide transportation, and whenever you drop goods or people from point A to point B, you get paid. One of the big things, I think, in the game is going to be about embiggening the cities, because the bigger the cities, the more population there will be. By the way, this is the smallest map um, in the game. When you have, there's a campaign, there's a three chapter campaign. Each I think has six missions. Um, the first few missions are very tutorially, um, but they have stories and voiceovers and things and very interesting like that. This is in free play mode. In free play mode, the map is completely gen um, randomly or procedurally generated. Uh, there are, I think four sizes. This is the small size, small size map. Um, just figured, you know, just show off things very quickly, but you can have very, very large maps. The other thing that's interesting in Transport Fever, and the original had this as well, you're not limited to square maps. You can actually have maps that are longer. You can have, so this is a one by one map. You can have one by two, so it's twice as long as it is wide, or a three by, but did I say one? I don't know. Or a three by one map, where it's three times as long as it is wide, uh, which leads to very different types of, you know, kind of building patterns and things, which I think is great. It comes with three different types of terrain. This is the um, the temperate terrain. There's also a, is it, it's like a rocky or badlandy kind of terrain and a tropical terrain as well, which likes to make sort of islands and things. And it's very green. Actually, it makes me think of playing, well, Tropico, which is, uh, which is actually kind of lovely. I like that idea. Uh, I did go with the temperate map mode over here. The other thing is you get to choose your vehicle theme. You get to choose between European, American, and Asian vehicle themes. And that apparently, um, not only does that affect what, like, say, what trains you can purchase, for example, but I believe will affect the naming convention of things, as well as the look of a lot of the buildings. Here, I've gone with just the European theme, um, because, I don't know, it was the default, and I was like, sure, that's fine. There's tons more options you can tune in terms of difficulty, and you can enable and disable all kinds of gameplay modes when you set things up. So it is nice to get those options. Anyway, let's talk about building up. So one of the goals I'm gonna say is probably to help increase the size of the cities. The bigger the cities, the more people there are that will be willing to um, accept goods, so you can ship more goods to the cities, as well as more people that are gonna want to travel around. And if the city actually does actually grow physically, in addition to that, there'll be more need for, say, buses within a city itself. Uh, and I really like the way that they've handled it. So if we click on Stourport on Severn over here, we can see it currently has 152 people in here. Um, and of course, you know, 
it's a simulation. All of these people are actually simulated in this game. And in terms of like the city size, I don't know, maybe you'd imagine, you know, multiply this by, by 10 or by 100 or, or something in your head to give yourself maybe how the city sort of would feel like thematically. But it is 152 people fully simulated here. And they will, the city will grow or potentially shrink depending on things that happen. These are all factors that affect the growth of the city. And then there's a target population. Pop, target populature. I don't know. Oh, it probably is population. It's probably just being um, just just being clipped over here. Okay, target population. So it's a base target population of 139. It's getting a 10% boost because they can use private vehicles to reach 146 de 49 destinations. 10% there. So 139 plus 10% equals 152. This is what the town is going to try to grow or shrink to, which is what it is. So that's why it's this size. If we can provide this town with stuff, it will grow. If we can make it so that their private vehicles can reach more locations, possibly by, you know, building some roads or something like that, building a, maybe a highway from support or Stourport on Severn over to Corby over here, maybe people will be able to reach more places with their vehicles. We can actually check with these overlays here, which is kind of neat. Uh, destinations, and so it'll sort of color code it. So private transport, they're using these blue routes. And you can see this is very, it's fairly light. No one's leaving town right now. No one cares. And honestly, um, Colby over here is small enough that I'm willing to bet. Oh, well, well, that's actually internal traffic within Corby. I'm willing to bet no one would care about driving over there. Plus, transport fever. We're not about just building a highway and let other people drive private, car private cars. We'd probably be most interested in providing transit, public transport um, destinations, which would also give us a boost. The other way you can grow a town is by supplying it with th things it needs. Starport on Severn requires, well, there's two zones in the city. Um, there is a zone overlay. Is it this one? Land use. Green, these are residential buildings. Blue, these are commercial buildings. Yellow, these are industrial buildings. And in here, there is, there we go. The commercial buildings require, I'm guessing, tools? And the commercial, or the industrial buildings in the city require bricks. So um, there's a supply of both of these over here. And if we start supplying that, we'll get a boost to the target population and the city will eventually grow. I would suggest, I think that early on the cities are small enough that starting right away with passenger transit is probably not a winner. I think the easiest thing might be to satisfy some of the industrial demand. Now Corby wants food for its commercial and bricks for its industrial. So we got two places that kind of demand bricks. Now where can we get bricks? Down over here, anywhere else? No, is that really the only place? That is currently the only place. Ooh. All right, so we have a um, constructions material plant, a brickwork. It wants stone and will convert it into brick. Well, it's called construction material. Okay, fair enough. Stone into construction material. Where do we have stone? This looks like a stone quarry over here. No, that's coal. Oh my. This is stone. Oh, that might not be that. That this this might be a little pricey to get started because we have to ship stone all the way from here to there, then ship the brick to Starport on Severn and ideally Corby as well. Maybe the best thing, Corby over here wants food. The commercial district wants food. It wants to sell like donuts to people. I mean, I know they look like loaves of bread, but let's imagine our heads as donuts. It's better. The nice thing about it is. Actually, no. Oh, this is a farm. It'll produce grain. We need to send the grain somewhere. Uh, do we not have like a really easy anything anywhere? Do we even have a food processor? Way down here. That might not be so bad, actually. Because we can run a train line here that will later on expand into there. Actually, I think I kind of like this idea. I think this may be our start. Okay, maybe I should have looked at the map ahead of time and made decisions or even re-rolled if this one was gonna to be too rough. So we want a train station near here that will collect the grain. So under the rail, which is over here, and buildings, we have five buildings. Now, two of them are gonna be passenger stations 
right these two are passenger stations and two of them are cargo stations the thing is all these stations are modular and you can add more bits to them including having stations that are both for cargo and passengers and have more capacity and all kinds of different things um they come either in the the basic cargo one here where you can see the station is on the side or the terminus version in the terminus version um the track ends there so you can't run track through this but might be okay for example like we might be happy with just sort of you know having a train station that sort of kind of ends over here and as opposed to running through because if we ran through we'd have to go through more fields so i think i kind of like the idea of this being a terminus station and let's get in a little closer let's actually go from the other side here because if we get close it will connect to the road and you can see how you see how the um uh the farm here will turn white as we connect over here that means it's within the catchment area the farm will be able to use this station um i don't know if the goods have to be um carried there i think they might just sort of magically start to appear so let's say we make a terminus station here and this is this our cargo one yes which is what we want and we're going to plop you down over there excellent so this is going to be grain and so we have to bring the grain over to this food processing station here. Um, I suspect with our rail, we are going to end up with tracks. Yeah, there's tracks, there's upgrade for things, right? Modifications. Oh, electrification. Uh, we've got signals. You can also set up waypoints later on. I'd suggest with our track, we're going to have some rail that goes like this into Stoutport on Severn. And then from here, I'm like this. Now you can see the numbers here indicate the speed that the train can reach. Bends and curbs slow down trains as well as if there's hilly terrain. I think because of the bends, unless we go with a really large radius, eh, maybe we will do that. So it can maintain maximum speed. Now do I want to build a terminus station? Tell you what, just to make, to showcase the two different types, We'll build a cargo station this way. And I think that's going to be okay. There you go. So you can see it'll be connected to the road and it shines white over here because it can be used as a catchment area. Uh, we'll connect the track up over like this. So it's quite a bit of slowdown on this bend, but I think that's going to be fine. So we'll go ahead and accept that. Now we're going to want to double track things or put passing points and things like that. But right now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little signal here and here to, you know, one sort of train on the time on this track. Not that this goes anywhere yet, but we're sort of getting ready. We didn't end up... Ooh. Okay, yeah, we rose the train, but it's not a bridge. I was worried it had bridged up over there, which would have increased the cost substantially. Let's go back to tracking from here. Yeah, you can see how, like, I build these long, continuous lines... Okay, that's pretty good though. I'm kind of happy with that. And then let's just connect the last bit from here to over there. So I don't know how future-proof this is, but we'll start with this. And then actually, we do need a um, we need an off to go to Corby as well. Are we going to want one train in a cycle? We might early on. Train from here goes here, and then goes to Corby and goes back. Kind of feel like we're going to end up with two, but early on it might be worth doing both. It's just reminding me that that button exists. Yeah, yeah, that's all. Hmm. We obviously have to build a station in Corby. Um, terminus or something sort of pass-through oriented? Actually, I think we'll do a pass-through. We are going to use a cargo station for now. And we are going to be delivering food. Uh, you see here, it's actually not going to reach all of the commercial districts if I build it here. Not all of them are highlighted in white. Whereas if I end up with one over here, maybe bulldoze in that road will be okay. Maybe I will build a terminus station then. Because what I can do is I can get you to go right here. And to me, that looks like it will reach all of the commercial districts right now, which is good. What we will have to do when we expand this to bring construction material or passengers, which passengers can use the same station. We'll just have to upgrade it with passenger facilities. Uh, we're going to need, say, for passengers, we're going to need a bus line. 
that can bring people from the residential area over to the station. But I think this is probably okay to build for now. And as for our track here... Uh, oh, that's the road. I was going to try to connect it to this. Yeah, come through over here. Over there. Maybe we will do it with one train. So I'll do it. You see it snaps nicely to like run side by side. We'll do that with roads as well, which is kind of nice. I mean, we'll have to do some upgrades and things with signals here later on, but for now, this is going to be an okay start. We are missing one more thing, which is the train depot over here, which is what is going to allow us to add more trains to our little setup. Let's, um... It can be anywhere, but let's just put you out over here. Like this. And we'll do twin tracks that way. And that way, not twins, split traps. And just in case, we'll put some signals here so that leaving the depot, you'll have to wait possibly if something happens. All right, we've got that. Let's go and make our first line. And yeah, it's gonna do, I think, all the work. So we're gonna make a new line. It's gonna start over here. In, uh, sorry, not there. Oh, is that just called Corby Station? I guess because it was first. Hold on, let's rename this. Um, what is this thing called? Corby Farm? Here, we'll use the same name. And then this station, Corby Exchange, we'll just rename to Corby itself. All right, I like that. Uh, what was this one called? Uh, yeah. No. Um, we're going to call this the Stourport... Oops. Stourport Food processor station. I don't know what this is actually called. Oh, yeah. The full city name. But we'll keep it a little bit shorter. That's going to be good. Maybe I should rename the city first so that other things will have the shorter name, but that's going to be okay. All right. Let's, uh, so we still have the line. We're on the click on stations to add mode. So we're going to start here at the farm. Perfect. Then we're going to bring it to the food processor. Then we're going to drop it off in Corby. And then we're going to go back to the farm. I am also going to say, at the uh, farm, you're going to try to wait for a full load, although you're going to wait for no longer than three minutes. And the food processor, same thing. You're going to try to wait for a food lo full load, but no longer than three minutes. We'll just give them a bit of a chance to swap some things around. And then Corby, there's no reason to wait because you're not actually picking anything up. So this is going to be the uh, Corby food line is going to be the name of this line here. Might get renamed because we might deliver food somewhere else later on. So next thing we need to do is buy a vehicle. We can do it by clicking on the depot if we want. Well, what it does, it opens the vehicle manager. This is the vehicle manager. And then when you've got a vehicle manager, you do have to like choose where you're going to buy it from. You can't buy it on the line, but I can buy it right over here. You can sort based on the transportation as well for when this get, list gets huge. So we're going to buy a vehicle. So let's see. It is 18, or 1920. We've got a few vehicles to choose from. So we got the uh, BR-53 Prouse, the BR-89 Prouse. Is that the year that it was released in? No, oh, this one's actually slower though. So I don't know. The PLM-220, the A-35, and the BR-75.4 Bad. Well, this one's bad. Do we want this? Oh, there's the build date. So this is the most modern. I'm sorry, is it 2 million for that train? Oof, that is expensive. Top speed 50, 60, 100. Uh, so you're less fast. This is more power. That's a train Grand Duchy. I think we'll use the 8. Oh, that is so expensive. Do we care about the speed that much? How about this guy? I like it. Sort of mid-rangey, like you can choose its color. Here, it's a red line, we'll use a red train. That is, that is a pretty funky red. But you know what, I'm fine with it. So we're adding this, this is the vehicle that we're designing. So 1.6 million for that. We're then gonna have to add um, cars to it. Now, we've got a variety of different ones. This is passenger. Boxcar can carry food, but it can't carry grain. I just realized we're gonna need more than one train, aren't we? 
The gondola can carry grain, but not food. There's a few of these different ones. Yeah! Oh, we are gonna have to split this out. Oh my. Okay, so this one... Let's redesign the line first, just so that when I add things, um, it becomes a bit more sane. So, your job instead, this first line, is going to be um, grain to processor. Oh, my, my train tracks are probably going to have to get uh, tweaked as well. And then a different line is going to be the food processor to here. Hmm. So I'm going to be like to wait till full but for a little while. So we are going to need a little bit more signaling. Possibly two, two tracks. Actually, that's probably the way to go. Let's modify the station. So we can configure the station. Hey, we get to show this off. You can see there's a bunch of things we can do. Uh, we can add platforms for passengers and things. Uh, I think in this case, all we have to do is add a second track. And I think that's going to be sufficient. We may need to add a cargo platform on the other side, but I'm not sure. I haven't played a ton of the game. If we do one of those, in theory, one train will arrive, and if there's another one then on the track, it won't be able to leave. Um, let me get rid of this signal, because I'm a little bit worried that it will do the wrong thing. Let me add in signals here, although I think the signals are implied by the stations. Still. Um, don't enter that way if it's not free. Don't enter that way if it's not free. Because this one long track will probably want a passing space on it. Actually, that's a good idea. Let's do that. Um, right over here. I don't know if Ben's the ideal place to do it. it needs to be, you know, long enough to handle a train, which this will be. Then merge in over there. And merge in over there. We'll want more of these. We'll want ultimately a full double track. But you go that way. Um, actually, it's at the ends that we really need them, isn't it? Oh, well, we might want one of the entrances as well, I don't know. We'll do this, and then with these things we need to say, yeah, we are one way. Can't pass through the other way. Okay, done. So now the two trains should be able to pass each other here if there's a problem. Oh, that's signal and the other thing. Let me let me bulldoze that too. Just because it might confuse me for later. Those are good. Those are good. Okay. Line uh, line two. So uh, we've added those in. This is going to be processor to Corby. Done. All right. So now i got to buy two trains. So the train depot. Train number one. Yeah, we definitely have to save a little bit of money. Uh, what were we going to use? The uh, PLM? Yeah, sort of a midpoint. So you're going to do this, then you're going to grab... So you're here for grain. I think it's the gondola here. Yeah, grain. Top speed is 50. That's actually an interesting thing to look at as well. On all of these... Oh, this box car here can do... Oh! Oh, these are upgraded versions. that can go up to 80. Ah, but are probably more expensive. Gondola here versus gondola here. Oh, it's much cheaper. Now... 50. Well, since 50s are capped, let's just buy this one. Cancel you. Uh -huh. If we're doing tra passenger transit, we probably want to go fast, but that'll be okay. So that train has a max speed of 50. We're going to add, I don't know, four cars. Note, it tells you the length of the, the, um, the train here. And our stations, I think, were defaulting to like 150 meters. So we made much longer stations than we needed. Probably paid more, but that's okay. I'm going to buy you. So this train here, which is the one that can carry grain... 
is going to run the grain to the processor. Next train, we'll do the same thing. Oops. Cancel. Um, we'll use the same engine, but you're going to be using the boxcar. The boxcar carries food. One, two, three, four of those. Purchase. And you're going to be carrying, going from the proce uh, processor to Corby. Okay. If we go ahead and unpause, we should be able to see our, our train start to move here. Birds! There you go, train number one. Grain to processor. Oh, I didn't color in the... Oh, you're leaving that way. Why would you not leave this way? Because that's where you're going. Oh, I guess you're, you're going to go to Corby first. Oh, is that how I set up the line? No. Okay, that's fine. You can ride to Corby first. It'll be okay. So you have a full load of food. Oh, and there's tons of food waiting over here. Okay, I probably should add more cars to this. I didn't realize the food would get produced that quickly. Now, your, um, your industrial buildings upgrade as well. So it's production, it's shipping, it's active transport over here. So it's waiting for some things to be uh, to be moved. I think the shipping is the means it can ship to a location here, but then that's waiting for transport. We we want more trains. I mean, I don't know if our tracks can handle more trains, but this part certainly can. So let's keep this pinned here, and our food processor. We're gonna keep you pinned as well, so you can see how it's doing no production whatsoever because it hasn't gotten anything. Oh, it's two grain per food. Oh, new vehicle unlocked, because we don't have the date frozen. Oh, it's a new train, 75. Some new cars and a new a new truck. So there you go. Goods are being delivered, so production has begun. So if we take a look at, um, this is the processor to Corby. So this guy won't have anything on him. He is empty. There we go, passing place. Huge success. There we are. Good stuff. We're losing money on these guys right now because they haven't done much. And yeah, I think I have to go and I'm gonna have to pull these guys off the line and give them a ton more cars. To make each trip a little bit more worthwhile. But yeah, you're only gonna have you're only gonna have eight bread waiting. Well, seven right now. And eight may and eight may have just gotten produced. No, nope, not yet. And yeah, this is going to wait up to three minutes. But I was going to say, don't you have a little bit more grain? Because didn't we deliver 16? But yeah, so this is going to wait up to three minutes for a full load. Now, I could double this guy up. I don't think that's the right answer, though. It's actually quite easy. If, um, if you look at a, a line... Uh, sorry, if you look at your vehicles... Um, and you can filter by line, so I can look at, okay, all the grain produ processors over here, these guys, I can click on this train, and there's a button right here, clone selected vehicle. And I can also send it to depot, which is probably what's going to happen. After it delivers the grain here, I'm going to send it to the depot and then buy some extra grain cars. And we kind of need this guy to be twice as long as the other one, if it's sort of a one-to-one -one ratio. Oh, you're waiting there, because this one is leaving. Yeah, we need more passing places, because that's, like, way too long to wait. We want to slew them, or we double line the entire way. And at this point, just double lining is probably more what we want. I like how it color codes the track. So you can see this only red lines are using here, only yellow here. Here you get a mix. I'm going over there. So yeah, you're going to deliver. I'm going to send you back to the depot and we're going to add more cars to you because this is simply, this is way insufficient. Okay, dropping off 16. And boom. Okay. So now you belong to over here, which, uh, not sell, can buy. Can I buy right now? I may have to wait. I, I suspect I should have to wait until it's here. Oh, I didn't realize there's a bunch of filters over here, too. Oh, nice. Let's see what happens when you get to the depot. Okay, I can't configure vehicle right now. Maybe once he arrives. 
Oh, that brings up the vehicle manager is what it does. Oh, we got airplanes too. Yeah, all kinds of transit. So, edit vehicle. Aha! Lovely. So, we want cargo wagons. We're going to add more... Gondolas. I was going to say, it looked like... Yeah. Gondolas here because you're carrying grain. Indeed. One, two, three, four. I mean, in a sense, because of our platforms, there's nothing stopping us from having a train say this long. I'm just checking to see if any of the other numbers change. Let's go with 64 capacity. Modify. And then you're back on the grain to processor. Job. Okay. Go. Now, did my, is my passing place long enough for the length of that train? I think it is. Yeah, it must be. But there we go. Sound effects, very important. Also, wee -hee! Hey, there's the other train! Love it. And there it goes now. And how much was waiting here? Yeah, over 100. Yeah, see, we're still not taking all the grain that's available. I mean, it's getting better. But we're still not taking all the grain that's available. Uh, we probably we probably want to double this train up. I suspect it's probably it. That's crazy. Any other city want food? No. No. No, literally the only place that wants bread is Corby. As the others are making their own, you know, locally. And these guys are going to be... Corby's going to be fat town. Um, but if we look... There we go. We are supplying here. So it's currently size 113. Oh, it's growing. Look at that. Um, it's now got a target population of 122. Because we're providing a boost from the supply over here. If we start giving it some destinations that it can get to, that would be the next step. And it, frankly, the next step is, in fact, I'm going to say, passenger transit. To be thrown in here. It's expensive. Our earnings are, are pretty low right now, although almost all of it, yeah, investments are just purchasing of like, vehicles and tracks and things like that. So, we are going to start. I think we might actually be profitable here fairly quickly. Where's my vehicles at? You're here and waiting. Um, you know what I'm going to do with you? Yeah, we're going to change this track. I'm no longer going to have you wait for goods here. Because it looks like it, it swaps them over very quickly. So they're either going to be there or not. And you're not you're not going to get more goods if the supply train isn't coming in. So we're going to do that. Food processor. Numbers are going down. But yeah, these can all level up to the next rank where it'll produce more and more and more goods. And I do like this. Suppliers, consumers. See, Cor Corby's the only consumer. There's four places on the map. And yeah, you can teleport to them. That's true. I forgot all about that. You know, when we were looking... Um, when we were looking over here, right? This place. So this place needs stone. Who can supply me with stone? Literally only one place. Wooler's Quarry. But two people can consume the stone. Wait, really? Oh, no, I'm still looking at the wrong place. There we go. Yeah, only one stone consumer as well. Yeah, two places consume bricks. And that is really helpful to be able to quickly do that, especially if you're on a larger map. Remember, I'm playing on the smallest possible map size here. On a larger map, and especially if you go crazy with, like, industry and everything, there can be so much. You're dropping off your eight bread. You know, it says, it says uh, plastics here. That's just the, um, I think the first thing in the list. If the... Um, Cargo has never been filled with anything. It just shows you the first thing in the list. But these can pick up a, a variety of different goods. So it's not actually being a plastic problem. There you go. So you've dropped off a ton. And now, indeed, 18, 19. Yeah, the breads are making their way. And this is all animated. Look at it go. Lovely. Yeah, it's got grain stored. It's converting them over. Yeah, it is only a matter of time. We can probably get these to level up. We do. I think we will need a lot more trains. I think I underestimated how much there would be. In terms of finances, if you do run out, you can take out loans. You actually start with loans. Look, I started with 10 million loans. 
Um, so I'm paying a fair amount in interest. But I think we are going to still be pretty profitable. Yeah, so that's an instant turnaround there. We might have enough just barely to start passenger transit. Let's, let's do the basics real quick. Kind of want to need to end the episode here in a sec, but let's do passenger transit. Um, and I think I will keep it kind of outside of town, like over here. So let's rotate you around. Put the station on the end here. We'll get the, we'll get a track that connects you up over there. Good, excellent. Now, people aren't really gonna be able to reach the station. If we look here, these buildings can reach the station, but that's it. Plus, some of these people that live here, this is because this is a big city. People that live there might not be able to reach commercial. So people every day, they leave their house, they go to work, they go home, they go shopping, they go home. They do all those sorts of things. I think we should get a bus line over in this town. And that's what I'm gonna do. So, for bus, we go vehicle, we go buildings, we get a bus stop, bus slash tram. We're just gonna do bus. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a bus stop over here by the station. Now there are ways, see it's, it's white so it's in the catchment area. So we'll put a stop here so that these two can interact with each other very easily. And then if we have here, it'll cover the, the residential area. Actually, we can go all the way down here. We'll put a two way. Um, so we can run the line sort of backwards and forwards instead of just circular. I don't know, actually. And then one in the industrial area. I don't know what we're gonna do. Let's make a new line. And then there, or I think actually we'll stop here. There, I like that. So it'll, the commercial zone through, or sorry, the residential zone, through into the commercial and industrial zone, back to the residential, and then making the, the terminus at the train station. I like this. Um, this is the Stourport, right? Stour, Stourport buses. I think that's swell. Now to get that going, we do need to have a vehicle depot, road depot to buy, sell buses and trucks. So we'll grab you, we'll put you just out of town. Like so. And we are gonna purchase some vehicles. Um, passenger. Yeah, so we, we don't have the horse-drawn carriages anymore. Uh, Daimler deck seat car. And they all have, you know, different capacity. This is the most, lifespan 30 years. They're pretty new, they're actually really new. These are the ones you just unlock. You know what, sounds great. Let's get, um, Let's get a trio for now. We'll buy you. And I don't actually have to check that. If you don't have any checked, it'll move everyone. If we have one, then it'll just move the one. But if we have, you know, whether we have all or none selected, it'll just do that. So do this. These vehicles will sort of naturally spread out along the bus line over time. We'll get them going. Now, if we take a look at our town stats, you can see destinations. There are now 12, 13, 14 destinations that are considered reachable because people are able to use the bus lines. That's gonna go up and that's gonna get calculated as people do. They're gonna be able to use the bus line to get places within their own town. Note, however, one of our quality ratings, our emissions have changed from very good to merely good, which gives us a 10% penalty, which as a result of everything here, this town is actually gonna to shrink to 141. We can probably fix that if we do finish the passenger line. So let's come over here to Corby. We got our train station over here. Let's configure it. Let's add um, Let's add a second track. Maybe a little less conflict. And we're gonna add a passenger platform. So passengers are gonna be able to sit around and wait for a train. And we need also a passenger building a little main building so that they can come in. We'll do it sort of like that. But yeah, there's others, a little miscellaneous buildings here. Passenger underpass, mm -hmm. for passenger platforms. Looks cool, side entrance. Like there's, you can make pretty elaborate stations, which I think it's gonna like, which I think I'm gonna like, but basically we're gonna have the passenger station there. Um, we need to, oops, not, we're not doing boats. We're not doing planes, although we have unlocked some planes. Airports. Uh, we're still, we're just doing trains for now. So we'll do this. 
As far as I know, the the stations itself they have they have their own signaling or whatever, so trains won't go out there. I think we will probably want to do another passing lane. So we'll do that. In fact, we may want another one on the main stretch as well. Boom, signaling. Yeah, I think we just want that, really. Uh, that is one way, and one way, excellent, so they can do that, and yeah, it feels like, a passing place there, it feels like we might want one over here, I, I kind of like that idea. Maybe right here, I think there's just enough room. from just here. There's the snap there. And then we can just link the two together. We just do a little bit and then finish it. Good. And then the signaling again. There and there. Yes. And yes to the one away. Okay. All right, we still have a little bit of money left. Good, I was worried I'd just gone bankrupt. So yeah, from our train depot, we we're gonna purchase vehicles. Um, we want, uh, we, we, we do have electric. We'd have to electrify our track, which we don't have. No diesel, so just steam. And let's go with like, oh, it's so expensive, we don't have enough money. Uh, let's keep going with the cheap one over here. In fact, we may be a little hard pressed to get all the passenger um, stuff as well, but we'll do what we can. We're gonna get you, and then passenger wagons. We have the six-wheeler or the donor boot. This goes a lot faster. So, oh, they both have a hundred kilometer speed. Less capacity. Ooh, less emissions on the big one. More expensive. If we get the smaller one, can we fit two on here and not go? No, we're gonna have to take that alone regardless. Because I don't think we need a ton of passenger capacity. Let's borrow some money. It's fine. There you go possibly go wrong. So let's buy this one. So 28 passenger capacity. I think it's going to be fine for now. I'm going to purchase you. And oh, we need a route. Ha <laughs> ha. New line. So is it going to be a cargo or passenger line? We click on the, the cargo side of it or the passenger side of it. Um, all the way to over here. This is the passenger side of it. Lovely. We could wait, but I don't think it's going to be the case. There's filters, by the way, what you can, you know, load and unload and things. Um, but this is going to be okay. So this is going to be the Corby Stout Port um, Passenger Line, like that. We go to our Vehicle Manager, uh, and we the one that's parked over here at the Train Depot, we're going to add you to the Passenger Line. We may want a little busing service in Corby as well, because not everyone can reach everywhere. Now it is connected by road. So, okay, we don't need another vehicle depot. It'll take a while for the vehicles to get there. But if I just set up a um, bus stop here, 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 I don't know if we needed one there, but let's do it. So let's make a new line, which is this, to that, to that, to this. Bit of an awkward U-turn, but the streets will develop. Or we could just build another street and change things around. But I think that's going to be fine. Uh, so this is going to be the Corby uh, buses. Of course, we could have buses going between cities, but they're super slow. No one wants that. Um, the road depot here. Buy vehicles. Um... How much are these? Oh, they're not too bad, actually. Let's just get a pair, because Corby's a smaller city. And Corby buses. So it'll take a while for the buses to get there, and therefore start to, um, to benefit the city. But in theory, 
these numbers of destinations via transit will start to go up. There you go. We've got, we've got the 10% there. We've still got this. Goal is 155. The city might grow a little bit. We're not delivering goods, but we are delivering them to Corby. Yeah, so the population target is 133. It is indeed growing. Nice. No passengers here yet. But yeah, now they can start visiting the two separate cities which is nice. Mostly we're getting the benefit from supplying Corby, and we're definitely not supplying it as fast as we could. If I had more money, what I would do at this point is, yeah, we have we have bread waiting to be delivered. That's not getting there. Um, I would definitely embiggen this vehicle. Do I take out another loan? I think we might have to. There you go. Passing place is going to go to work over here. Done. Lovely. Very nice. Double tracking is so much more efficient, but I've always liked passing places. They feel cool. I like signals. <gasps> this train is actually profitable. Oh my gosh. There we go. Delivering some more food. Um, I'm going to send you to the depot. Yeah, I do still have to wait for you to get there. Oh, planes. Ah, the Class A3 Flying Scotsman. 120 kilometers an hour. This guy's just going back to the depot. Yeah, we'll, we'll take out we'll take out some more loans. It's fine, you guys. We'll just go deeper to debt. That never went wrong for me ever. Oh, you've got to wait. We got a train coming through. It's a big one delivering all the bread. And yeah, it's really easy to just duplicate the amount of uh, a train that's on a line. But I think ra I don't think we need to buy a new engine. I think that would be um, there. We go edit vehicle. Well, maybe that was already there. I don't, I don't think so. Is it supposed to buy? I don't know. Um, cargo. You are using box cars because you're carrying bread. Yeah, these box cars. I'm just gonna double you. Because really, that's the capacity the other one is now bringing. This is the correct ratio. There's still going to be some idle ones, but no, this is going to be okay. Yeah, I like it. Oh, we don't even have to take out a loan for this. Excellent. Okay, and then we'll put you back on the processor to Corby line. They're still going to Corby first. Why is that? Did I do something wrong? I mean, that's probably what happened. Reverse. There you go. Now you're going to the food processor. Excellent. There you go. Save us a lot of transportation time over there. Oh, yeah. There should be plenty of food. Actually, there's only 15 right now. Did someone go bad? Because this carries 64, this carries 32. Well, still. Might have been something in the order that it was happening in, but... It definitely left food there last time. I think, oh, I think we might be sneaking in two trips to pick up in between uh, the deliveries here. Which is entirely possible. But that's okay. We still don't have this guy waiting. Which is correct. We want him to vacate the station right away. Shipping the transport, no upgrades yet. How about you? Yeah, you can still transport so much more grain. But grain consumers, there's literally only one place that con that consumes that grain. It does sound like we could go and, and bring it up a fair notch though. It's gonna be forced to stop. Yeah, I think I think we do need a lot of double lining. We could just stretch this part out with a little bit... Oh, we're negative money. So unless I took out loans, I wouldn't be able to. But hey guys, standard quill, we're going to run a huge deficit. But hopefully... Um... Yeah, no, no, I was going to say, if you look at 1922... If we... Oh, we're 1925 now, sorry. Over here. If you take out the investments, the railroads, does it cost new vehicles? No, it's maintenance. Oh no, we're, we're totally running a huge deficit. 
Uh, oh, is this a oh, number of stuff transported this year, I bet. Oh, that's nifty. But hey, the cities, you know, have been growing. Oh yeah, you're really not liking the emissions. So there's a few things you can do to improve the emissions. Better vehicles have uh, reduced emissions. Increasing the maintenance on vehicles reduces their, ma their emissions. Also, not having emissions or vehicles drive through town, which you can't really apply for a bus. The buses really have to drive through town regardless here. I like how you can follow vehicles two ways. You can follow them this way, or of course you can do the first person view as well. Beep beep, I'm a bus. And we are in fastest speed there, so that might look a little ridiculous. There you go. If we bring it down to normal speed. Hello. I can't read German. Something Wasser. So something water. For all something. I don't know. Wait. Starboard buses. Oh my god, it's got the name of the line. On the sign. Oh, that's great. I love it. I love it so much. This bus turning a small profit. Uh, we can take a look at our individual lines here, which ones are costing us money. Passenger line right now running a negative balance. The food process of Corby is also running a negative balance. And then individual vehicles. So it's a new year, it's just started. You know, we might, we might be okay. We did just embiggen um, the amount of stuff we bring per per load. I probably should have like tried to max it out. Probably right from the start, I should have been like, listen, these things can handle trains that are 150 meters long, so let's build trains that are 150 meters long. That's probably what I should have done from the start. And in hindsight, in butt sight, that's what I would have done. Well, I can always take out more loans. Folks, thanks for watching this. I'm going to see you guys next time.